no talking, no opinions, and don't stand out. Hello and welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. In this channel, I, Shogo, will introduce various topics about Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, this is your one step deeper. And today, I'm going to be talking about this topic. Being normal in Japan is very important. You shouldn't stand out, and you must never say your own opinions. I can say this is true from my own experience of being bullied in school because I was different. Although I'm Japanese, I grew up in America for six years. When you search YouTube for why I hate Japan, it's usually about this topic. Many foreigners and returnees like me have experienced some kind of discrimination while being in Japan. So today, I will first explain two real life examples of how Japanese society forces you to be normal. Then, I will introduce one study that might be an exclamation on why this is a characteristic seen in Japan. So, let's go to the Let me first introduce two examples of how you are taught to be normal in Japan. Number one, school rules. When you see Japanese teenage girls in anime, they have super short skirts and pink hair. But the real school rules here in Japan would probably surprise you. Let me give you some of the crazy examples to be a good student. No piercing or any other accessories. The length of uniform skirts must hide your knees. Your hair must be black and no perming. Your front hair must not reach your eyebrows. And boys should not have their hair covering their ears. And the girls must tie their hair if their hair touches her shoulders. Socks and underclothes must be white. Umbrellas must be dark blue. And hairbands must be black. And many, many more. There was an event that brought national debate over school rules in Japan in 2017. It was the story of a girl in Osaka who had natural brown hair that was forced to dye her hair black due to school rules. Her scalp was badly damaged from dyeing her hair multiple times, and she turned mentally sick from being scolded by teachers too often about her hair. She became unable to go outside, and her parents sued the school. Although there are many critical opinions towards the school about this terrible incident, even now in most schools, students who have natural colored hair or natural perms must go to the hospital to receive a certificate proving that it's natural. I had a friend in elementary school who had natural perms. So he submitted a certificate to the school. But the teachers continued to have a cold look at him. So he gave up and shaved his head. Each school has its own rules. So not every school are this crazy. But as a Japanese, I feel that more than 90% of the schools are still like this in Japan. Number two, job hunting. In Japan, there's a tradition of job hunting season or shūshokukatsudo in Japanese. Every year, about 90% of university college students who are in their final year of study will start taking tests and interviews at once to find a job. This tradition started in the period of high economic growth from 1955 to 1973 for companies to efficiently gain supply of labor force every year. And this Job hunting culture is also a very good example of how Japan loves to force the young to be the same. Wearing a pitch black suit. Hair must be black. Boys short and girls must tie their hair if it's long. Always smiling. A loud and clear voice. Say what to say at interviews. I of course experienced job hunting myself but it is truly scary. All the young college students who used to dye their hair, wear any clothes they like, and enjoy their personalities, suddenly all tried to look 
normal and the same like everyone else. And there actually is a correct answer to what to say at a job interview. There are many textbooks sold every year about what and how a good job hunter will reply at interviews. I personally felt this culture was too strange, so I quit job hunting. And that's how I started working at Shishin Samurai Restaurant first. I never have and never will regret this. To get a clearer image, there is a perfect YouTube video called Shukatsu Kyosou Gyok. You don't need to be able to speak Japanese to understand it, so I hope you can take a look. Why do Japanese people cherish being normal so much? One way to explain this is because Japanese people are addicted to justice. By natural instinct, humans feel pleasure when we right the wrongs. That being said, people who are craved to feel this pleasure become addicted to justice. Why do humans feel good when we right other people's wrongs? This is because humans are social creatures and have lived in groups for over 2 million years. So it is a human instinct to exclude the people of the group who acted differently. Keeping a person who is not a team player or one that disturbs the harmony of the group would lead to a life or death situation. And even though we live very different lives now compared to the hunting and gathering era, this trait still exists in us. While every human shares this instinct of feeling pleasure when avenging the rule breakers, why are Japanese people especially addicted to it? It is because Japan is a country of natural disasters. Japan is an island on top of four of the 10 crossroad plates on Earth. This means there are many volcanoes and earthquakes will frequently occur. Japan is just 0.28% of all land on Earth, but 7% of active volcanoes exist in Japan. And over 20% of earthquakes stronger than magnitude 6.0 happens in Japan. Also, an average of 26 typhoons pass near or over Japan every year. And sediment disasters occur because about 70% of land in Japan are mountains. In order to survive in such a harsh environment, Japanese people learn to always cooperate with each other and at the same time violently attack anyone who wouldn't. If you had one selfish person in an emergency, there's a risk it would kill everyone in the community. Many people around the world praise the politeness and cooperation of Japanese people. But in a way you can say, it's a Japanese instinct not to be hated by anyone or to be thought as a traitor. I know that many people, regardless of nationality or gender, are suffering from being discriminated in Japan. I hope this video will be a chance for you to deepen your understandings towards Japanese society and hopefully relieve some of their pain. Then lastly, today's conclusion. I introduced two real-life examples of how Japanese society forces the young to be normal. School rules and job hunting. They both train you how to be a good student and a good adult. The reason why being normal is so important in Japan can be explained by a human instinct of feeling pleasure when you avenge the injustice. This instinct was born because humans have lived as social creatures for 2 million years. The existence of a rule breaker or a selfish person in the group will expose the others to danger. Japanese people are especially addicted to justice because Japan is a country of natural disasters. They needed to frequently cooperate with each other in order to survive in emergencies. So even today, Japanese people tend to attack and exclude people who looks different or stands out in any way. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. While watching this video, you might have thought, then why do you still live in Japan? 
I believe that Japan needs to change in many ways, including today's topic, and I want to become the trigger to do so. I might have to fight through some criticism, but I'm willing to take the risks. If this video helped you to deepen your understanding of Japanese society, please hit the like button and share it with your friends and family. And my goal is to achieve 10,000 subscribers by July 2021, so your help would mean a lot. Thanks again, and I'd love to see you in my next video. Thank you.